Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to Kerbal Complete and Kerbal Space Program. Today we're launching a mission to a dwarf planet object called a Centaur object out in the orbits of the outer planets, added by the Minor Planets Expansion mod called Kroxlev. Yeah, so this is my rocket. We're using a uh, Saturn V style booster with two solid rocket boosters on the side. And inside this giant fairing here is our interplanetary vehicle. Yeah, so we're just starting to pitch over, trying to hit about 90 degrees once we start to switch that into the thinner parts of the atmosphere. And just let those two side boosters go as they've expended their fuel. And we're just kind of coasting up until we can get our apoapsis above the atmosphere. But yeah, the place where we're going, Kroxlev, it's called the Centaur object because it, uh, it's like a object that kind of gets tugged around in between the orbits of the outer planets. Kind of interesting, it has a ring system, which is really rare for a dwarf planet. Yeah, it should be really cool. So it looks like we've kind of reached our altitude that we want. We're just kind of coasting up to our apoapsis until we can start our kick burn to fully circularize around the planet and then uh, since we're kind of right in the right spot, we can kind of just start burning until we can get our escape trajectory out of the Kerbin system. But we've just expended that booster, so we've popped the fairing open, and this is my interplanetary vehicle. It uses an engine from the Kerbal Atomics mod, which provides some alternatives to the stock nerve engine, like the stock nuclear engine. Um, this one is just kind of a little bit more powerful, which is really nice. Also, I have stock alike station parts expansion redux mod adding these really cool centrifuges and inflatable crew cabins for my spacecraft. Uh, yeah, those are my two main part mods. Uh, I really recommend them, they're awesome. Looks like we're kind of going to do a flyby of the moon real quick on our escape trajectory. And once we're out on our solar orbit, it'll be easier to figure out how to set a trajectory towards Kroxlev as it's on a huge relative inclination. I think it's like over 20 degrees relatively inclined. I just set it as my target um, and we're going to have to set a maneuver node on the other side of our orbit to fix this difference in inclination. It's a really big burn over 4,000 meters per second of delta V. This current spacecraft design that I have here, those tanks are full of liquid hydrogen, uh, which is a fuel that the Kerbal Atomics mod uses. And I've kind of set this up so that they have drop tanks, just like that. I just dropped one of the empty tanks. That'll help us save our uh, wet to dry mass ratio on our rocket, so it'll be more efficient that way. And so now that we've set our inclination, we can just hit a prograde maneuver all the way out so we can get those close encounter nodes right on top of each other. And then that will be our intercept for the trajectory. another really big burn and we will be uh, dropping the second drop tank here so yeah it takes a ton of fuel to get out there hopefully it doesn't take as much fuel to get back that's what I'm counting on but we're just about to dial in our encounter there's our encounter now that we're just drifting towards Kroxlev I want to give you guys a tour of the interior of our spacecraft what we just got out of is the re-entry module, which is kind of disconnected from the rest of the spacecraft, but if you get on a little spacewalk and uh, get in through the, the lander's airlock, you can inflatable living space and the centrifuge through this top hatch here. And this is the main living area for our Kerbals on this trip, multi-decade trip out to Kroxlev. It's pretty cool. This part, like I said, is from the stock alike station parts expansion redux mod. And the mod that allows you to traverse the interiors freely, like I'm doing here, is called Free IVA, which is a game changer. You guys should really get it. This part right here is the centrifuge. So if we climb down the ladder here, because this thing is spinning, it kind of gives us a centrifugal force-like effect that kind of feels like gravity. And this is what the interiors look like. We have some bunk beds, uh, living quarters areas, some science equipment, storage, and that's the whole ring right there. And then once you're up in this little intermediate area, you're back in zero G. 
now we're back in the lander. So yeah, that's our little tour of the spacecraft. We'll be using that re-entry module that we started in to re-enter the atmosphere, but it's kind of disconnected from the rest of the spacecraft at the moment. Now we're figuring out our adjustment of our flyby so that we can get a periapsis that's a little bit closer to the dwarf planet. And there's our first look at it. It's got a really unique ring system for a dwarf planet, which is awesome. All right, we're just getting that flyby a little bit closer. And we're warping ahead to when we've entered the system, which is, looks like, about 13 years later. And there it is. That's Kroxlev, the Centaur Dwarf Planet. We gotta set a maneuver to burn retrograde relative to the dwarf planet so that we can capture around it. It's another big burn, only about 1300 meters per second. Cool, now that we're in orbit we can get a uh, more circular orbit on the other side and check out this ring system. So, Kroxlev is based off of a real-world centaur object called Cheriklo, if I remember correctly. And the reason why they call it a centaur object is, I think their compositions of centaur objects are kind of like halfway between an asteroid and a comet. So, half man, half horse, uh, I guess that's why they call it a centaur object. That's all just from, if my memory serves me correctly, if any of you astronomy people are watching, feel free to drop more lore in the chat. Uh, that would be super interesting. So now we're going to be getting ready to do our landing. So we're just transferring our crew into the lander and we'll be undocking and getting ready to set our course down to the surface. I think I'm going to try to land in that giant impact crater on Kroxlev's side. So we have to maneuver our trajectory down to a lower orbit around Kroxlev and then we will wait till we're in position to do our final deceleration towards the surface. We're gonna have to wait a few orbits till we've crossed, till we have the impact crater in our path. And now that we have that all lined up, I've started my deceleration burn and I'm making a quick course correction to aim for uh, one of the canyon openings near the edge of the impact crater. I think that'd be a cool spot to land. just still making adjustments to my trajectory so I don't uh, overshoot this little canyon area right here. Alright, looks like we landed safe. I uh, kind of hit the ground a little bit further away from the canyon edge than I wanted, so we're going to hop on over towards the mouth of the canyon real quick, and that'll be our final landing spot. Cool, we've touched down again. I think this is a much cooler spot. And we can get our Kerbals out for our first steps on the surface and take a quick jaunt around or leap into the sky. The uh, gravity here is super low. This is a very low mass object. And so we can kind of just hop around as we please. Here we are planting our flag.
It's really cool to see how the light bounces off the interior of the canyon after sunset. That was pretty cool. It gets really dark on the night side being this far out. From the sun, you can see the Milky Way, or I don't know, whatever the Kerbal version of the Milky Way is in the sky. Do some science. And since we have the mod Distant Object Enhancements, we can see these little dots here, which are actually the other planets in the Kerbal system. So we're looking at Kerbin right there, Sarnus, and Erlum up there. And this thin ring system surrounding the dwarf planet, which the real life analog, Cheriklo, is. Uh, supposed to have although i've heard that it might just be a dust cloud around the dwarf planet but that's not as fun do some more science all right let's get back up to the mothership it's already been like 13 years in space so i'll set it as my target and we have liftoff I'll just pitch over kind of towards the uh, heading of my target node, which is the direction that my mothership is currently at right now. And we will just drift up to our apoapsis and finish circularizing, but we have to say goodbye to Croxleb for now. We have to adjust our inclination first so we can get an encounter or a close flyby with the mothership, that'll make it a lot easier if you're on the right inclination. I had this weird glitch here, not sure what's causing it, but when I'm time warping it, it kind of stutters. You might see that in the next minute or two, but it went away as soon as I docked with the mothership, which is kind of weird, but I don't know. Okay, we've got those close encounter nodes right on top of each other, the purple ones, and we've got a separation of under a kilometer, so that's really awesome. That'll make it super easy. So I'll warp ahead till we have that flyby. And what you want to do is point, uh, set your nav ball relative to target and then burn off all of your relative velocity and then burn towards your target and then you'll eventually kind of drift over towards it. And then you're going to have to kill off your speed once again. And so I said that I docked earlier, but that's actually not true. There's no need to dock. We can just space walk over save us some hassle because we won't be taking the lander with us anyways it's essentially dead weight at the moment and we barely used any of the fuel in our lander i way overpacked on that so it would be a lot of unused mass that we would have to take with us and speaking of mass i'm a little nervous about how much fuel or delta v that i have left to make it back to Kerbin. so i detached the habitation quarters and the centrifuge ring to save on weight. So our Kerbals are going to be kind of cramped in the re-entry mo module for the remaining uh, couple years until we can get back to Kerbin. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's either that or drifting in space forever. So I've plotted my escape trajectory out of the Croxlev system. And that's what I'm executing right now. But on my way back to Kerbin, I'm actually going to be hitting a slingshot off of Sarnus, which is the orbit that I've highlighted there on the map. It's like highlighted yellow, as I've said, as my target. And once we're out of the Croxlev system, I'll work on setting up my trajectory so that I can get a gravity assist off of the planet that not only corrects my relative inclination to Kerbin, Croxlev right now is on like a over 20 degree inclination difference. So we're gonna adjust our Sarnus flyby so that the resulting orbit, which is that dotted green one in the background around the sun, um, is more lined up with the inclination of Kerbin's orbit. And also at the same time, 
we're coming in at the Sarnus system so that it kind of slingshots us in the opposite direction that the planet is traveling, which will lower our speed or our periapsis on the other side of the sun. So it actually kind of serves to slow us down a bit too uh, relative to Kerbin. So it'll take a lot less fuel to, I don't know, circularize maybe if we have that opportunity back at Kerbin or I'm another thing I'm kind of worried about is if this thing can survive re-entry at this these like high interplanetary speeds but we've warped ahead we're just about to enter Sarnus's sphere of influence and we're flying through the system to get that gravity assist now All right, we did it. Sorry if that was kind of a mouthful of orbital mechanics jargon, but it worked. And now we're just working on getting an encounter with Kerbin um, before we have to wait a whole nother orbit to get another chance. So I kind of have to brute force it. So I'm playing with the prograde and uh, radial in and radial out nodes on my maneuver node planner to get, to get our encounter. And so we've got a uh, really good trajectory to fly through the Kerbin system already but I'm just going to make one more maneuver node later on to fix my inclination. That'll make it easier to kind of tweak our trajectory on approach. So right here I'm just going to adjust my flyby. I want to skim the atmosphere so that I can use the atmosphere to break almost to capture around Kerbin or hopefully slow down enough to just land directly so i'm aiming for like a 40 kilometer ish altitude and i'm actually going to be using the engine of this spacecraft as almost our initial heat shield because it's kind of like shielded for these long nuclear burns it actually has a really high heat tolerance and uh, our re-entry pod wouldn't have survived this first um aero break so the engine and its heat tolerance really came in clutch with this one. And our altitude's starting to climb, so we're actually on our way out of the atmosphere, but it looks like we will be capturing, so we will be able to re-enter on this next pass. So we've detached from the main spacecraft assembly, and we're warping ahead till we re-enter the atmosphere a second time. All right, we've uh, burned off most of our speed and just deployed our chutes. And now we're just drifting down towards the surface. Those chutes are gonna open up soon. And we're on the home stretch here. Just wait until we splash down in the ocean here, safe and sound. So yeah, that's gonna be about it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Kerbal Space Program content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.